dig further down. Digging down, all right, cut off the top. can also be used as tinder, so if you can hold something beneath it to catch the sawdust, you can use that for edging up fire. As always, be careful. Don't put your arm in front of the knife. Rod is very nice. I always have a first aid kit just in case. Ground sawdust. Mm, I like the smell of sawdust. Oh, the camera's on. Anyways, just brush the sawdust into your pan like that. And then the excess sawdust that missed the container that lands on the leaves, you just dump those in there. And boom, there you go. Notice I use an empty citronella candle. This is a fire resistant, fireproof container that you can obviously make fire in. Yeah. 
Okay, so for those of you who didn't see the earlier episode, or in case I may have accidentally deleted it when I dropped my phone, hold on. Got rock some mud in my knee pad. Nope. As I was saying earlier in that episode, I tried using a commando saw. So I'm going to try using that technique again to finish this off. Okay. Put my foot on it, hold it down. Yep, you can see, there you go. Pointing pressure with my foot and pulling upwards. Back and forth. Come on. Man, it's stuck already. Come on. There it is. Come on. Come on. As you see, I'm not familiar with this technique. Ooh, you don't want to do that. That's an example of what not to do. Yeah, there you go. Boom, hold it with your knees. That prevents you from sliding around, obviously. And as you see, the commando saw technique is effective. As always, be careful, stay safe, and God bless you. All right, now I've got a log. safety glove. That's actually a work glove. This is a safety glove. Anyways, I'm going to saw about a finger width down so it ends up up there. And once again, a cut like this is dangerous, so be careful, seriously. <laughs> I just want to start at a side angle, dig into one side like this, okay? And away in case it slips. Okay, you don't want to touch your leg or anything also. So start your notch there. Right at an angle, and then begin to lean it back to get it straight. Hold on, you can't see. So once you have it cut in a little bit at a notch like that at an angle, then you can just begin to lean it back, right, carefully. And you watch your hands, you don't want to cut yourself. So we're going down the middle of it. Alright. Once again, catching this object, as, you saw, as I showed, as I was sawing, and as you've seen. Another, another example of what not to do. You don't ever want to just get too relaxed and comfortable while you're sawing, and, and then accidentally... Oops! As you see, it takes some time and it is some exercise. Okay, let's see it. Never mind. kit. However, this is one of my first bushcraft kit, I mean projects. Now I start a wooden hammer. As you see, I wrapped it with chew twine to make it quiet. It is quieter to use a wooden hammer than a metal hammer. Ting, ting, ting. Tuck, tuck, tuck. See? So there's the hole. I'm going to put the hole. That doesn't sound right, sorry. Anyways, instead of just using the folding saw, I'm going to try a different technique. Demonstrate a different technique, that is. There is no try. There is only do or do not. So what I'm going to do 
is hammer this knife into the slot that I've already created in the wood. In the beam. Well, you know, this knife blade is only so wide. I've done this for smaller branches. This is actually pretty high. I don't want to really just tap on the tip of it like that. I can, but it may cause damage to the tip of the blade. Let's see how this works. And it gets stuck pretty well. And that happens is just bang on the blade again. As always, being careful, of course, staying safe and being blessed by God. Wooden hammer technique. That's the floating hammer technique. I'm holding it with my other hand. Duh. perfect of a swinger and I don't want to put it in my leg or foot. I'm just going to tap it with the block, see, like I was. Back and, back and forth. Back and forth. Yo. There we go. Watch your fingers when you're tapping that too. When you're tapping on it. Still don't sound like so. Now I'm going for that dangerous angle cut. See how I was hammering in just, to, or I mean, at, yeah, anyways, you saw what I was doing. So now I'm gonna go at an angle right there. It's actually kind of a dull axe. I should have sharpened it, so that doesn't help. So this is using a dull, rusted axe. I wouldn't hammer. Careful, of course. That's the meat patch. Carefully holding on to the handle, obviously. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I want to connect it in the middle so that it will break off a little wedge that I'm tying. Uh, this spot that needs to go at a better angle. There we go. Come on. Oh, my threads are coming undone. Coming undone. I'm threaded. Hear it starting to sound more hollow. That's how you can tell when you get closer to it. Come on now, man, so close. Well, there's an easier way to carve a notch into this log. Please leave a description in the comment box. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you like this video, share with somebody else. <laughs> Did y'all see these jute threads go fly it off this hammer though? Now this jute twine can also be used to tend it. Okay, now I don't want to hammer too far down because I don't want to disrupt the integrity of the wood. I want to keep its strength. I'm just trying to chip out this top chunk here. Of course, this 
axe is not sharp at all. I mean, seriously. Wah, 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 wah. But now that I have the notches further down, I think I can saw the rest of the way. I better control what I'm doing. I'm going to be in the back. Remember to have your safety glove on. And if you brace into the log with your knee, like this, then that will hold it in place. Instead of lifting it up, if you know what I mean. Come on. Just, uh, it's a good piece of wood, nice and solid. safety equipment like knee pads. The blade is obviously at a bad angle. An example of what not to do. But I have faith in the good Lord to protect me and to help me and to give me strength to chuck this piece out of here. Uh. See? Pump it up. Even with a dull unsharpened axe. And this wedge can be used for now. Okay, now I get to continue on the other side. This notch has a last name. Do you know what it is? Notch, your mama. about a wooden hammer when you set it down it disappears that's a camouflage here first and I got another wedge not to create a wedge between anything but to loosen the wedge there you go wow because looks like a heart shape see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes Jesus loves you yes you Nice, you know, I got extra sawdust sprinkled on the jute twine. Dig the hole just a little bit deeper. 
about that much to make that much difference. So I want it to be lower than eye level, not above your head. Now it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Good serious. If you do want to tell somebody, tell them by sharing this video. too far back let's go ahead and snap your hand then you'll be finding a good size branch to replace it with or doing it by hand puppy style now for this I'll switch back into my work dirty get dirty work glove You don't want to put your pile too close to the hole because then you'll defeat the purpose of it when it rolls right back down. Oh, gotcha. You can be here all day doing that. <laughs> if you got that better to do, then go right ahead. Oh, you hear that echo coming out of that hole? Hey, this is the sound of you're listening to whatever. Prepping for the apocalypse. Are you prepping for the apocalypse? I hope you are. He's always watching. You know, around the holiday season, they say Santa Claus sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. No, no human being is all knowing like that. And if he is, that should be, he should be on the FBI's most wanted. Because he's sneaking into people's homes through a chimney. That's called burglary, y'all. Flying reindeer magic dust. What is that? Seriously. Some sort of what? Make believe? The reality is we will all face God on the judgment seat after our death. And he does know what we're doing even when you're alone. So if you've ever been in your home alone and you feel like somebody's watching you, get that paranoid feeling, it's God. He is watching you. So if you're in a store and you think nobody sees you, you're trying to steal something, God's still watching you. Even during the persecution of the tribulation and the apocalyptic situations that we may endure and will endure eventually as we are preparing for. That's what this is all about. Prepping for the apocalypse. I'm serious. Okay, let's see how well this sawdust tinder technique works. Is it going to burn or is it going to just sit there? So far it's just sitting there. Hmm. I heard the jute makes good. Mm. I don't know, we'll see. Hmm, there you go. Jute twine and sawdust. Work just fine. Ooh, and that fresh cut sawdust pine. It smells nice, not to mention it's in a citronella candle, which has its own smell. So, there you go. That'll give you a little bit of warmth too, because it is cold out here. So, I got the band aids on my face. Keep my cheeks warm. There you go. Easy way to stay warm. Anyways. 
All right, so this is the height right here. So now I'm going to fill the hole with some large size rods to hold the pole in place, support the main pig, the main post, main pole, main beam, the main support beam. You know what I'm saying. Carefully move this. Ooh, ooh, that's hot. Be careful. Put it on a rock. Watch your thumbs. Be safe. Be careful in God bless you. It's actually melting the container, y'all. You see that? It's melting. Okay, so let's quickly snuff out the fire. I put a rock on it. Now I'm gonna cover up some of this clay dirt. Back in the sides to make sure the fire gets snuffed out all the way. All right. You yeah, know, there you go. There's a quick little lesson in safety. Because if I would have poured water on that citronella candle, when you add fuel to a citronella, any kind of candle, any kind of waxy substance, it becomes dangerous. So if you tried to pour liquid on that, it would become dangerous real quick with all these leaves. Even though they're wet leaves, it could spread a fire. So be safe, be careful, seriously. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so sawdust and jute twine. Yes, works good for twinder, just fine. For tinder, just fine. But don't add it to a citronella candle. <laughs> That's dangerous. And I'm being serious. Seriously serious. Seriously serious? Yes, as Pastor Paul Bagley says, shout out to Paul Bagley, Paul Bagley Bible Prophecy. You can see his program, Welcome to the Apocalypse. Or is it Welcome to the Coming Apocalypse? I think it's probably Welcome to the Apocalypse these days. At this point in biblical history, anyways. Okay, I was going to use this rock to fill in that hole. However, thought I'd use it for a demonstration for fire prevention. And anyways, how to respond quickly to an emergency fire situation as a warm-up. Oh, no pun intended. For the next episode, you want to stay tuned for that. So invite your friends to subscribe and follow this because it's going to be very serious discussing surviving apocalyptic weather situations whether or not you can survive and we're going to make sure we're prepared so that we do survive so i thought a good starting point would be fire safety because a fire can break out anywhere at any time it's not always necessarily weather related but the question is whether or not you know how to appropriately respond because if i had to just pour some water on that it would have set everything on fire quickly but instead i knew to snuff it out with a rock not a cloth piece of fabric that will add to the fire. Good way to ruin a hoodie or jacket. Anyways, we'll get back to that next time. Spoiler alert! Okay. Go ahead and scoot some of this dirt back into the hole. This sweater style, medicine sweater serve plates on their arms like this. And this is carrying technique because you can only fit so many in your hand. Another technique you could use your shirt to carry multiple rods, but that will stretch out the shirt the heavier it gets. You can even slip a few in your hoodie if you wanted to. I wouldn't want to. Anyways, to hold the post firm and secure, I put a layer of the uh, dirt clay, clay 
Yeah, and then I'm going to set this one with rocks though. That's kind of rock. Some rocks and then some more boot. And then more rocks. Etc. Etc. Just keep layering it like that. Let's see what I mean. That looks like it's crooked, it's because the phone's actually in there. See, now yeah, it's straight. You can tell because it's stubborn. But the sandbags, actually, you can tell because you can use a level on it. Boom! Actually, it needs to come back some, you're right. It should be more like that, huh? Now it's level, it wasn't that far off. Boom! Let me just put that back in there, like that. More rocks. Uh, notice how I tried to choose edges of rocks that would fit the shape of the pole. See how close to that fits the contour right there? Boom, like God created it and intended it for such a time as this. Not scriptural. That means God's created this tree and that rock knowing that I would eventually be right here right now. Think about that. That's how God wants us to be in our way, not wishy-washy one side or the other. He wants us to stay in the straight and narrow, keep it level, right there in the middle. Boom, may your bubble stay. And in the middle, the narrow path is not easy. Wide is the way of destruction, saith the Lord. Some spontaneous preaching for you. See me, it held me up, right? All right, say that's pretty secure and solid, not bad. And once again, that's how God wants us to be in our faith firm, secure, unwavering, deeply rooted, and strong like the cedar or a mighty oak. This is a pine tree, but it is also good. Good example, good teaching. Thank you. All right, take these off now. Not really that cold right now. Obviously, I'm not wearing my jacket anymore. And since I'm getting preachy with it, I might as well say, check out these oversized tea lights. They're green. Seriously, I would have gotten a lot more compass if it wasn't messing around with the camera. What kind of mushroom spores do you think those are? The kinds you don't want to eat. Just a guess. Anyways, as I was saying, just as you want to be prepared for the apocalypse, and you want to be prepared for fire safety as I demonstrated putting out the fire with this rock. Oh, look, it melted to the rock. <laughs> anyways, I'm not joking. Ooh, the smell of melted sulfonella, anyways. You want to be prepared for the emergency of a fire, right? Well, hellfire. Hello. You want to be prepared for that. You want to be prepared for eternity. Just think about your day-to-day -day activities. Think about what God is seeing in your activities and whether you are approved to gain entrance into heaven. And I have to check myself too because I get mad about little things that stress me out. I'm always in a hurry and I'm supposed to be peaceful, patient, and tolerant. And all of these are issues that I personally struggle in. I'm a human. I am not a robot. But that's not an excuse. God wants us to strive towards excellence, although none of us are perfect and none of us are necessarily better than anybody else. We're supposed to be humble and we're supposed to trust in Him in any situation. In all situations, actual trust, trust in the Lord in all things, good or bad, and especially in the bad. 
Sometimes it makes you mad and you're like, God, why? But you have to accept it. It's the serenity prayer. Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot change. Give me the serenity. Please give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. Now many have the serenity to just accept things they cannot change. I'm in a hurry. I skip past that. I go straight to the courage. I try to change things. I'm not in control. God's in control. And therein is wisdom. I'm being serious. And God bless you. Stay safe. Be careful. All those things. In any situation. And trust in the Lord. But hey, how about this notch on the top, huh? It's top notch. <laughs> ah, there's the angle. All right, so that was quite a bit of effort just to add that support beam, but everything's going to be resting on that, so it has to be sturdy and secure. I'm going to reinforce it with more rocks and build up on that after I enclose it. And, of course, you can see i got some more. Anyways, back to that, step by step. Keep making improvements to your shelter, and don't give up. Don't give up. Right now it might be storming, but you're going to make it through the bad weather. Don't give up. The sun just might be shining in the morning and you might feel better. Don't give up. So don't stress, now just rest and don't worry about today. Don't give up. You got to have faith that a positive future awaits. Don't give up. Spontaneous song for you, there you go. It wouldn't let me hit the pause button, so I said, okay, thank you, Lord. My gift to you, or perhaps God's gift to you, because he works in mysterious ways. You believe and have faith, trust in Him in all things. I don't even know who I'm talking to. Perhaps God's talking to me and reminding me, because I struggle sometimes. Just being honest. Anyways, I got more work to do. So, so. Until next time.